Hi, everybody. Welcome to Blockbusting, the podcast where we love to hate movies. <laughs> I'm your host, Jay Light. Joining me today, uh, my wonderful old friend. So great to see her in person again. It's Kate Gaffney. Hi. Hi Thanks Kate. for having me on, Jay. So great to have you, especially you you had me on your podcast a long time ago. Mm-hmm. I was promoting my album, right? You sure were. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That was almost two years ago. That is bonkers. And yeah. it was in the middle of COVID, height of COVID. Height of COVID. Yeah. Now we're good. Now we're good. Now Everybody, we're good. Now we're out. Now Everybody's we're out. having fun. You're not in Ohio anymore. No, You're I'm back here. here. That's right. Um, in sunny Los Angeles at That's the wonderful right. Second Home Studios. Which are crazy awesome. You're crazy awesome. We've yeah. got a new setup. Shout out to the wonderful interns who are helping out with production now. Jay has interns, everybody. We got it's JD so and official. Emily over here. JD and Emily. They will be on. So get you you guys will see them at some point, listeners. But for now, uh definitely, by the way, speaking of Kate's podcast Service from Hell, you should go listen to it. That's right. Immediately. Um, yes. It's a very, it's a very fun time. Uh Kate and yeah. I both worked together at the comedy store. So we had our fair share of of horrible service experiences that we had to deal with. Yeah, they, they were unpleasant is the word I use a lot now. But we got through it, Jay. We got through it and we laughed a lot. And yes. now we're not there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now we're here. That's more right. specifically, Kate is uh, Kate. You came to me with a movie that I'm surprised nobody's brought to me yet. Thank you. And I'm glad that you did because it's coming off of perhaps a devastating blow to its credibility Mm-hmm. Uh, by not getting nominated for any Oscars besides the hair and makeup. That's right. Um, that is House of Gucci. House of a Gucci. There it is. Now you've done the accent yes. that everybody took on, the except your accent is actually better. <laughs> who knew? And that took you three seconds to come up with. Yes. And these are trained actors whose accents were Mario and Luigi from Super Mario Brothers. Terrible. No sense at all of uniformity to any of their accents zero the entire movie everybody did a different accent accurate and is in a different movie (laughs) everybody's trying to be in different movies in this one movie (laughs) that is the most accurate just you just that's i wish i would have come up with that line podcast over that's it we're done yep thank you so so much for listening (laughs) um yeah this movie just came out near the tail end of last year i remember ridley scott had the director he had two movies come out did you see The Last Duel, his other one? I did not. They came out within like a month of each other. I didn't see it either. Um, I do know that it shares Razzie nominations uh, the same way that uh, House of Gucci got a couple. Well, before we get to that, because I'm mad about some of the Razzie <laughs> nominations for this film, because sure. I disagree, because for the most part, I hate this film. But I will say there were a couple people committed to the method and the process. And so I think that's why it came onto my awareness. I had ignored it largely because I just didn't. I just didn't care, mm-hmm. but it came onto my awareness because of the SAG noms. And so it got nominated for some SAG awards and it's up and we were sent screeners. Yeah. And so I was like, Oh, I'm going to watch this film. This got a ton of buzz. Like this is going to be great. Sure. And then within the first 30 seconds of everybody speaking English with terrible accents, I was like, wait, 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 what are we doing? Like, what is this? Because like, I don't know if you've seen talented Mr. Ripley. No, but, never. Oh, it's one of my all time favorite films. It's a brilliant film. But in that, they they shoot it in Italy. And okay. when they are speaking to the Italian people, they speak in Italian. Even like Jude Law's character, who's primarily speaking English, when he speaks to Italian people, he uses Italian. So mm-hmm. you're never taken out of the film. Like, it's just, it's so brilliant. And I thought, for sure, House of Gucci, they're not shooting this in English. I'm like, for sure, everybody learned Italian. Like, that's happening. And then when I heard English, I was like, all right, maybe that was a choice for the beginning. That's where maybe. we're at. Like, just, just dabbling in, in it. And then there's a moment when Lady Gaga's character, who is Patrizia, she's walking to go see her future fiance. Yes. And she's being catcalled, as is an Italian trope. Okay, the men are, you know, the men cat. There's a lot of catcalling that happens. There's a bit. There's a bit. But you wouldn't think that the catcalling would be in English. That's true. Because we're in Italy. Yeah. And as soon as they were like saying things to her that I fully understood, I was like, nah, 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 come on. I, yeah. I, I, come on. That happened to me. <laughs> That's literally one of the first things that happened to me in the movie where I was like, this 
is going to be a rough ride. Yeah, and it was. It was. <laughs> they they start off with some narr- uh, some VO narration, which I think, would, yeah, I can understand why that would be in English. No question. But the as soon as you have guys catcalling in English in Italy, and we know we're in Italy, we've got the subtitles that say we're in Italy. We know. We know. We've got the the Italian um, the Italian filter on the film, which is another issue I have. But yes, <laughs> then everything is yellow and brown Was when it, it's outdoors in Italy. It's sometimes that. Mm-hmm. But then, do you remember in the wet? I'm getting ahead of myself. But in the wet, I'm ru- <laughs> spoiler alert. If y'all haven't seen this, don't waste your time. But the the wedding scene when Patri- Patrizia is marrying Patrizia. I can't do it. <laughs> again. Better accent than we heard in the whole film when she's marrying the the lead character whose name I cannot remember. Adam Driver's character Maurizio Maurizio Gucci. Gucci. Thank you. See, I set him up for that. Uh, when they're going to get married. Do you remember when they're walking into the limo out of the the church and the screen or the the filter goes to black and white? Yeah, that happens a couple times. Does it? Because I only saw it that one time. If it happens more than that, then my criticism is less. There are a couple black and white things that happen. And it seems to be around timing wise, big shifts in the narrative. Oh, you're better at this than I am. Yeah, I get why you have this podcast. Well done, Jay. I should leave. But you know what? You're still correct that this movie is wrong <laughs> and makes a lot of Thanks, weird Jay. choices. Thank you. Because I think the, my biggest problem with the movie, it's a movie that's sort of a biopic about Ish. Patrizia. Patrizia Reggiani. <laughs> it's sort of about her and it's sort of about all of these, you know, the members of the Gucci family. Mm-hmm. It's a drama, but it's not really a drama. It's sort of, I've seen people talk about this as a satire Oh, um, I didn't see that. Okay, well, I yeah, it's got I mean, it's got a, a stellar cast: yes. Lady Gaga, Adam Driver, Al Pacino, Jeremy Irons, Jared Leto, just to name like the big heavy hitters. You've also got folks like Jack Houston is in this oh. movie, who I love. Sama yeah. Hayek is in this movie. She is. And this whole this whole movie about where where we're sold that okay, this is going to be about Lady Gaga murdering her husband. Ostensibly, that's what we think. That's what we think. That's mm-hmm. what the trailer makes it out to be. Sure. The trailer makes this movie seem like it's going to be a fun romp through Italy <laughs> where there's going to be some murder and also people are going to be dressed in nice leathers. Yes. You know? And we're going to get to see the the collection as it was sketched out. That was the part I was most excited about. Mm-hmm. And we see that once, maybe twice. This, I don't know. This is not that movie. This is not that film. And I, I, to go back to what you were saying, like about just I want to focus on the cast because. Yes. As an actor, you are also an actor. It is very hard to exclusively drag everybody's work, right? Because right. you're thinking, all right, especially especially some of the actors in this, who I'm like, your method. I know what you went through to get to where you got to mm-hmm. really embody this character. But it felt like they did like 50% of the work and then they were like, I get it. I, I kind of get what this character is about. Sure. I'm going to interpret the rest of this for the rest of the film. And then you're like, whoa, this, you're a different person. Mm-hmm. And it's, it didn't feel like it was an evolution of a character. It felt like it was like, yeah, I got busy or whatever. Like I get the idea, right? Ridley, we got this. And yeah. then they just kept filming. And I <laughs> like, but my biggest problem was the juxtaposition against Jared Leto's performance, which, and this is, I'm going back to your Razzie comment. <laughs> I'm so mad he's nominated for a Razzie because I felt like he is the only thing that kept me from th- chucking my computer out the window watching this. Oh I was like, God. his accent was good. I felt like his character work was good. I, I know. Kate. I, I know, Jay. What? I know. And I'm alone on this island, but I will die on this hill. I think he's so good. No one's going to save you from this I know. island. You don't have to. You're wrong. The Razzies <laughs> are wrong. He's so good. And I felt like his work made everybody else's work that was already questionable look like hot garbage. I think, all right, I'm going to, I got to disagree with you on this. Because I do think if you, I I think the person whose hill I'm willing to die on for Mm -hmm. this movie performance wise, and I I know we're going to have to talk more about this, is Lady Gaga's. I'm going to (laughs) leave. I have to leave. I can't. Really? Yeah. Wait, why? So I think Lady Gaga, there's one scene in particular that really sold me as like, you know what? I think she understands how to play this character in a way where it stopped being a caricature and started being like, oh, I get it. Because like the whole movie, all of, let's let's just be perfectly frank. Every single one of these characters 
is a caricature. No question. Nobody is playing anywhere close to reality. I can understand why people are like, this is fun and campy and silly because all the performers are putting on silly, campy performances. Jared Leto, as much as you think he's doing uh, a, perhaps a transformational performance. <laughs> You're so condescending, Jay Light. <laughs> he is doing a transformational performance. Go ahead, finish your thoughts. He's, but he's a caricature. He's uh, he's a Mario brother <laughs> in this movie. It's so great. Oh, okay. He's like, he, he's so ridiculous and he's so silly in this movie. But that's the thing, like Al Pacino, also ridiculous and silly in this movie. Jeremy Irons isn't even doing a, a attempting to do an Italian accent in this oh, movie. He, He's just being Jeremy Irons. Thank you so much for pointing that out because when that started, I was like, oh, I literally didn't know enough about the family. Mm -hmm. I go, maybe this dude was originally in the States and came over to Italy and like found his Italian roots and then started this fashion line. And then I researched him and I was like, he was so deeply Italian. He had spaghetti in his veins and, and he's playing this character as like, I was like, <laughs> What is what a choice? Like it's what so a choice. It's so strange. Yeah. I felt like I was just kind of watching a version of Jeremy Irons from yes. Watchmen. I, I all I heard was the Lion King. As soon as it came out of his mouth, I was yeah. like, "Oh, this is what is he? This is Scar. Plays, this is Scar." Yeah. And I, I thought this is Ozymandias from <laughs> Watchmen. We're just seeing him, just a guy, just a rich guy in a in a manner. Okay, but on that note, Jay Light, you have to concede this. As soon as you saw Jared Leto walk across the screen, were you like, that's Jared Leto? Or were you like, who's this actor about to crush this performance and everyone's going to judge? I knew it was Jared Leto. No, you didn't! I can You're such a liar! I know what Jared Leto's <laughs> eyes look like. Oh, okay. Well, Jared, that. Jared, here's the thing. As transformational of a performance as you can be, like, with makeup and stuff, I can understand why this got a Best Hair and Makeup nomination. No question. No yes. question about that. Yes. I'm shocked it didn't get an other craft nominations. Agreed. I, I would love if it had gotten a costume design nomination. I, it it should have. Great. It should have. Um, but Jared Leto has, like, eyes and a nose that I can't mistake. Okay. No matter what kind of bald cap <laughs> and what kind of jowls he puts on, <laughs> he did put on I know what Jared Leto's doing. Okay, and but, I know how he's being. And here's and, and to to the point that I was trying to make earlier. Yeah. Jared Leto never did a scene for me where I felt like he was playing a real person. Real. Where Lady Gaga, on the other hand, there is the one scene where she is in Switzerland. Yeah, and she goes to talk to. Uh, Paola, who is uh, the person who her husband, Adam Driver, leaves her for. The mistress. The mistress. And she talks to her while they're sitting on these uh, on these benches at the ski slope. And the the level of like calculation and menace in what she is actually like the un like the undercurrent of what she's saying and mm -hmm. the feeling that she's bringing to that scene. I was like, OK, I get it. I get it. I never felt. That kind of a scene, even when Jared Leto, even when pa if Paolo, when he's <laughs> so rude, <laughs> even when also by, why, why, why can't you just change, like do a little slight change. One of your characters is Paolo. One of them is Paola. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Ridley. Get your shit together. Um, well, these are real people. So maybe he was like, I can't. I don't these care movies. if they're real people. <laughs> they don't seem like real people. Fair enough. Um, but like even the scene where <laughs> I'm going to disagree with he, you. He pees on the scarf. I like that was a little that was a little I will agree but that's with you. his Oscar scene I disagree his Oscar scene is where he's he's he gets yelled at by Jeremy Irons he is super mad and then he pees on a scarf okay but now I want to open your eyes to do you remember when they're at, in the boardroom right and Al Pacino's character is like being told he needs to sell his shares yes and the and they're on those like I don't know the buyers are on the other side of the table mm -hmm. and Jared Leto's character is sitting right next to Al Pacino and he like touches his arm and he's looking at his dad and he's being very like deferential to this character or his well, that wasn't his dad his uncle it is his dad it's, it's that one's his dad that one's the dad that one's the dad Mauricio okay. is his nephew that's right okay but this is the dad his idiot he's my idiot son <laughs> that's right well he like grabs his arm and he has this really charming moment with him where he like I energetically I was like oh he's he recognizes that his dad is like giving up something that matters so deeply to him mm -hmm. and Adam Ke Driver's character is like weirdly looming in the background doing nothing adding nothing to the scene but he's right. in a shot who cares and Jared like grabs his arm and like looks and you see him like cheat over his over his like right shoulder or whatever and he looks genuinely sad. And I'm like, that's your Oscar scene. Not the pee scene was ridiculous. <laughs> but the, the boardroom was like, cause I don't know enough about Ridley Scott to actually be able to answer, answer this. But are most of his films kind of campy and weird like this? Not that I know of. I mean, I've seen 
Not a ton of Ridley Scott films. I'm going to pull them up on Wikipedia now. I, I mean, the most obvious one to me is Alien, which is the furthest thing from camp. That's yeah. uh, malice and terror and all sorts of crazy stuff. Because Thelma and Louise is the one that I'm, I only really remember him from because that movie, like that was Brad Pitt's whatever and everybody loved that right. film. And I didn't, I've not seen it. Sorry, cinephiles, shoot me later. But I, from the comparison of something like Thelma and Louise, which was grounded in reality to this, I was like, oh, this isn't, I mean, I don't get the sense that this is his style, but like he's 84. He might've just been like, I don't care. He can kind of, at this point, he can kind of do whatever style he wants to. I mean, The Martian is a comedy, right? And that's, and that's Ridley Scott. I think, um, uh, uh, what's the one? American Gangster is closer to this yeah. in terms of style because it's a, a, a crime drama. That's right. But even that is deeply serious the entire way through. Sure. This, I feel like if they had made sort of like a farcical crime story, I would have enjoyed it so much more. But it just doesn't know what it is, it seems I think like. that's fair. But what I don't understand then is like, so you really appreciated the moment in, in the Swiss Alps when the, when she's like reading the mistress, right? Yes. And you, you thought that that was good. The difficulty that I have with that is like, okay, you can take that isolated moment. I would mm-hmm. agree with you. There was definitely tension there. But then you sh- the scene where she's confronting him about knowing about the mistress and she's like screaming and crying and like throwing her arms or whatever. I thought, okay, like for sure, a woman in that position would scream and cry and whatever. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't have, I, I don't think it's grounded in reality to be like, and then this, oh, the te-. like the levels. I was like, girl. See, here's what I think. Here's the way I read that. As I read it as that is Patrizia doing a manipulative performance to try and get what she wants. Because immediately <laughs> after that, he's, you know, Adam Driver, who also, by the way, in a movie full of caricatures is totally phoning it in. That's right. And it's so right. it's so upsetting. Yes, it's so obvious. On a different on a different level than the entire rest <laughs> of the movie, which is upsetting in a bunch of different ways. <laughs> but even in that scene, like she goes right back from being hysterical and crying and screaming and yelling at him mm-hmm. to the flip of like, oh please, you know, I want I want you to I want to try and make a you know we gotta we gotta do the custody thing we gotta make yeah. it work and I, that felt like more of a, of a choice on Patrizia's part to be deliberately manipulative to try and get what she wants because the whole movie she's getting what she wants. That's a really good point, Jay. That's a great point. I'm st- I still hate this film, but that's a really good. I point. still hate this film too. Okay. I think that Lady Gaga, uh, I she's my favorite part of the whole movie. I would give her. <laughs> I, 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 I think that she is doing the best job, but that really doesn't change a whole lot for the movie itself because the first half of the movie, even really the first like two thirds of the movie, this movie's long. This movie's almost three hours long. Almost three hours long. It's and, too long. And for your lead to not really click until the second uh, or the third act, the third third of the whole movie, mm-hmm. that I can't, I can't reconcile with. Well, and I, I would agree with that. And also I felt like if Adam's character is finally plugging into, he, it, it, like if he never really wanted to marry her to begin with, or if he never really wanted to follow her lead to begin with, because one of his biggest criticisms of her is that, and this is the family points this out to him too, throughout the film is mm-hmm. like, she's taking you away from the family. She wants to be a Gucci. She's a chaser. Like they established that very early on that that is, she got her hooks in him early. Yes. But even Okay, if say that's all true and that she like manipulated him, even in the moment at the table when the lawyer is like buying out Adam Driver's shares, I refuse to call him this character's name. (laughs) He's buying out Adam Driver's shares and Adam looks and has this pause and he like stares straight straight at the guy and he was like, she was right. And has that line where he's Mm -hmm. finally acknowledging that Lady Gaga's character wasn't actually doing all of this stuff. Right. But there was no change in him. Yeah. It was as if he had just said, and I'd like to borrow $5. Like mm-hmm. it was no, it, it, because you would think that that would be a crushing blow because you blew up your marriage based on your family's telling you that she's a pile of shit or she's she's got a gold digger right. or whatever. And all of a sudden you're realizing you're wrong. You blew up your whole life and you're not really that into your mistress anymore. Like, don't you think you could have taken a beat? Like he pauses kind of, but there's no, he doesn't go anywhere with it. Mm -hmm. And I thought 
it is definitely a method choice to be like, to, to pay attention to how someone is, as I'm sure you know, and if they are level set all the time that you're paying attention to them, you, you as the actor can be like, oh, they just must be level set all the time. But that's like, short of being a sociopath, like nobody's level set all the time. And it's, it's not fun to play a character that just is this all, this is very, then be, then be sure, the Terminator. Sure. Like, then you're doing a different film altogether. You're a robot. Yeah. Well, this is the interesting thing too. And I don't fully understand, like, in terms of acting technique, it seems like you're a lot more skilled and schooled on that than I am. Like, my idea of method is the I think the lay person's idea of method, which is like that's what Daniel Day Lewis does, <laughs> which he does, and he's brilliant. He's brilliant. <laughs> and my problem is that you can see based on stories that have been told in the media about Jared Leto. Jared Leto also is a method actor. He sure is. And it's a real shame that we lost Daniel Day Lewis and we have Jared Leto still. <laughs> I. I love Jared Leto. I want it so on record. I love you, Jared. If you ever hear this, first of all, I'm single. Second of all, I love your performances. So please don't listen to Jay. Did but, you love Did you love him in The Little Things, which he also somehow got a bunch of awards attention for? I didn't see it. Dallas Buyers Club was the last really big film that I like. was like, holy shit, you're brilliant. I see. I never saw Dallas Buyers Club, and maybe that's why I've, I've got my bias. You maybe do. What's I, The Little Things? What's the going Little on? Things is a movie that came out last year. I did an episode on it. It is atrocious <laughs> it's um it's a crime drama where jared leto plays a creepy guy who might have been a serial killer Ooh. but isn't okay. or something um i i don't really remember and it's another one of those movies that's kind of like this where like it, the the other two leads are rami malek and denzel washington i did see this yeah. he's a, he's he's uh he, they go bury someone in the desert or whatever this he, is they bury they, him, him in the desert okay I but did it's see after this. he's like toying with them being like you might have you might have put somebody else you, in the desert you might have dug in that wrong spot you didn't like him in that no he's so good he's no he's not good he's <sighs> just he's being the most baseline like caricature of a creep that anyone can be that's okay. all jared leto's version of method acting to me is <laughs> Jared Leto is like, if, if Daniel Day Lewis is like truly capital M method, then Jared Leto is like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to try and do just like the barest amount that I can. Cause it feels like in that, it felt like he was just being what you would imagine a creepy guy to be mm. in this. It felt like he's being what you would imagine a lunatic idiot bumbling fail son to be. Who's also Italian. Okay. And is wearing like weird jumpsuit coveralls for most of the movie. That. That's true. That he designed. By the way, as uh, like there's there's such a rich level of stuff that you can find in these characters. Yeah. And it just felt like I didn't I I didn't care about any of them. That's that, that's, that's the craziest part. To that's me. it. That right there is it because I couldn't get invested mm -hmm. because it felt like the movie was poking fun at itself, but you said it perfectly up top when you said the movie didn't seem to know what it was. And that's, I think if, as the audience, if we're going to go along on the ride with you, even if you're doing an Italian and this is how you talk, and it's yeah. so insane. If you want to earn my trust when you sound like a Mario brother, then then you have to be grounded somewhere else. Right. Like there has to be a piece of you that believes what you're saying mm -hmm. anywhere else. And, yeah. it, and it just like, and in that, I feel like Al Pacino, I know you didn't love his performance in this. I felt like he believed what he was saying. I feel like he kind of did, but also to me, Al Pacino is not really doing anything different than he's doing in like, Performance wise, Scarface. Sure. He's just being a different kind of calculating, manipulative person in this who is speaking with a sort of Italian accent instead of a sort cool. of Cuban accent. Yeah, but, okay, but don't you kind of think that's his whole brand though, is like, I'm at, I can't do that. I'm not even gonna fuck at that. I can't even guess. But like, don't you like, think that's kind of his thing is like when you're putting him in a movie, you're getting Al Pacino. But I know he can be a different, he can be like a, a different version of Al Pacino. I know in, in The Irishman, he's not the crazy bombastic oh. version that he is in this. Yeah, that's right. I could see, and and this is the uh, this is my problem too. Like, I think that, there's a, a version of this movie that could exist somewhere. Or truly, honestly, I think this should have been a miniseries. I don't think it works as a movie. That's interesting, why so? Because it just feels like even in almost three hours, there's still so much to the story that I learned about just from like looking on Wikipedia Google. about and Google, yeah. yeah. There's so much to the story 
And there's so much to these individual characters that I want to know about yeah. that I didn't learn in this movie. Well, and I totally agree with you. That was one of my biggest criticisms mm -hmm. is like, if you're going to spend this much time basically putting to life the Wikipedia page, then okay, but you have to give us a nugget, like a, even if it's the teensiest of details that we didn't know previously, right. then I'm interested. Yeah. But I totally agree that it's like, if I can if I can just read the plot instead of wasting two, six hours of my life or however long mm -hmm. it was, like I'll just do that. Like if, but if we had gotten, and it basically what this amounts to is like an Italian succession. Like if <laughs> we had so got right. a succession, <laughs> a succession with the Gucci's, if we could have done that, I would have loved this. Yeah. And also I feel like that would have addressed the tonal issues. Cause like, sure. this is, you know, from, uh, the Hollywood reporters, David Rooney, this is a, t uh, it fails to settle on a, a consistent tone. It's overlong and undisciplined, a trash tacular watch. Jesus. Right. <laughs> and I think that that's accurate to some degree. I don't think it's as nearly as trashy as it wants to be. And it's not nearly mm -hmm. as like crime drama -y as it wants to be. It's just got to, it's, it should have just, I felt like leaned more in one direction or the other. And then we would have found some way to care about what these characters were doing instead of everybody kind of being what they hoped their plot line would, would look like after this movie was out of the edit bay. So that's totally fair. IndieWire for the, for the SAG awards, they send you these little like annoying as Ooh. fuck postcards and all of these little I've never like, seen bits those and bobs. Before. That's because you don't open your mail, Jake. I won't, is, well, I'm you, not in SAG. Oh, you're either. not? I thought you were. No. Nah. Oh, just kidding. You don't see these. Don't nope. look. You're not allowed to see this. Um, <laughs> but one of the things they said in IndieWire was they're interviewing Leto and I brought this because I was like, he's so good, which he is. Uh, and they said uh, his whole thing was keep your co-stars on their toes. And it says some critics have suggested that Leto and his co-star Lady Gaga are acting on their own planets. Al Pacino likes to tell the story of not recognizing Leto on his first day as Paolo on set. Quote, sometimes actors have to wait and ask permission to do something, said Leto, who wants everyone around him to have the freedom to try new things. Pacino told Leto, being surprised, quote, woke him up and inspired him. There's synergy when you have people who are both willing to dive for it. Mm -hmm. And like, here's the thing. I, I think your assessment is right that everybody, like, not only does the movie not know what it is, it's also everybody's on their own planet. But the fact that you had so many people who have prolific careers, careers that people would murder for sure. and who are recognized as like actors of their particular generation. I would say no offense. I know he's old, but like that falls on the shoulder of the director. Like it's for sure screenplay. Yes. But also this falls on the shoulders of the person who needs to cobble together and mm -hmm. be like, all right, everybody. But, I have heard that when you get this many egos in a room together and this many huge people, it's almost as if the director is not there. The director's whole job is to be like, you're pretty and you matter, do whatever you want so mm -hmm. that they don't storm off set or so that they don't like have a meltdown over Diet Coke or whatever the hell. Sure. So he may have been contending with so many big egos, which I have heard Adam Driver, I have heard is, who knows, allegedly, don't sue me, but I've heard he's not the easiest to work with. I buy that. And they had trouble in Marriage Story and there've been like previous set, sets where they were like this guy. But I think if you as the director can't wrangle in all of those egos, then start casting some green people or mm -hmm. balance it and have a star. And 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 because I felt I didn't again, Dallas Buyers Club, I didn't think McConaughey and Leto, it didn't seem as if they were fighting back and forth for like the pivotal screen time. Okay. And in this film, I felt like everybody was trying to, to create their own, no, no, this is my scene. Yeah. Like, and it was like, okay, but everybody's definitely trying to out act for two the and other a half. people yeah, in this and, movie. And you can't like, it's exhausting to watch that for two and a half hours. Cause like it would even putting on shoes. There's a scene where uh, Lady Gaga's putting on these stilettos and it's like, how's this dramatic? You're putting on shoes. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> And Are you talking about the one where she's putting on the shoes in the mirror and you just see like the shot is just her ass in the yes. mirror and then Al Pacino comes and he's and like, oh, it, yeah. so beautiful, <laughs> my lady. My lady. It's like, oh, my beautiful <laughs> knees. Yeah. yeah, and then like now you're this creepy old dude. Yeah. And yeah, I felt like, if, if if everything's dramatic, nothing is in the same way. If everybody's a star in every scene, nobody is. Right. 
And so the people with this more subdued performance, which could be why driver's choice was, I'm going to be this guy all of the time. Uh, that that uh -huh. maybe was to balance out how big the other performances were. But again, falls on your shoulders, Ridley. Super sorry, bro. Yeah. But you have to get everybody acting in the same film. That's right. And it didn't feel like he did. I can't imagine that Ridley Scott was like watching dailies of this <laughs> and sitting there and being like, <laughs> something is uh, something wonderful is happening here, and I'm not going to change a damn thing about it. You have to do a bad British accent when you do something. Uh, is right, it's right, wonderful. It's really fucking wonderful here. <laughs> I'm not scared about talking to any of these people. <laughs> I've mastered the art of directing. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with you. And if you're looking at, I, I mean, I wonder if at some point they recognized that they had lost the plot so hard that they that he was just like, you know what. <laughs> whatever mm -hmm. make the movie and then they had such good costume design and they had because they, they i think i'm fairly certain they definitely shot in italy proper yeah i think most of the movie was shot in italy and i'm double con yeah i'm, check I'm checking that. that as well yeah and um but yeah and I, and i think that if you're going to be there and you have these stunning backdrops I understand using uh, having even if the DP cinematographer said we're going to use a filter on this to have it feel as if it were in the 70s no problem i get that no or, problem at yeah all. but then like make up your mind because that filter wasn't present when they were it was in aspen or switzerland wherever they were skiing the alps yeah the alps. Switzerland. they the filter wasn't there it was a very blue scene and then in the same way that like i can only remember that one time i went to black and white you've since shown me that that was probably an active choice god mm -hmm. bless them but it, it either be I don't know, like make it seem as though it were an artistic choice, right. then have it be consistent. Like same thing. If like, if you're going to, uh, Italian, if you're going to be a Mario brother, then never dip out of it. And that was the other thing. Gaga and drivers characters, both of them as the actors would dip in and out of the, like the severity of the accent. And right. I'm like, I'm already trying to be on board with you sounding like a cartoon. And now you're not consistently cartooning. Like this is hell. Uh -huh. I, I can't finish this film. I did, but I finished it and it took me two sittings. Ooh. And here's the other crazy thing too. As much as I did, like I said, love Lady Gaga's performance because it is easy to love somebody who didn't get nominated for a Razzie as part of worst screen couple with himself. <laughs> Which is what happened to Jared Leto. Did I don't want to talk nomination? about this. Yes, I did. And I'm mad. So, his okay. 17 pound <laughs> latex face, his geeky clothes, or his ridiculous accent. That's the worst screen couple nomination. Folks. I think his accent is so good. Uh, is it a good? Uh, <laughs> Somebody sounds like Or is James. it a ridiculous? Uh? <laughs> Everybody go see the film just for this accent to tell me I'm right and Jay is wrong. I feel like what Jared Leto did, you know how in, in Godfather, Marlon Brando put the cotton balls in oh, his mouth? I, I feel like that. in this, Jared Leto just like slurped down a bunch of pizza grease and put it in his <laughs> jowls. Anyway, joke aside. So rude. But the thing is, like... And even Lady Gaga, who went method for this, stayed in character would, for nine months. I didn't know that. Yeah. And and talk to uh, this is a, a story. Uh, talk to Tony Bennett, her her friend and confidant, who she's worked with on a bunch of stuff, um, about how he doesn't like how Italians are represented in film as criminals. Uh, and she wanted to make a real person out of Patrizia, not a caricature. And studied her cadence, studied her attitude, but then still decided to like improvise a bunch of weird lines like the father son and house of gucci that's improvised oh, uh, jay I, I almost my brain almost exploded Why would when anyone... she did like i was like this isn't nobody i thought i thought i swear to you, i was like oh sh this must have been something that they said mm -hmm. to each other but i could i'm like how did the set not how that probably took 67 takes because the crew would be laughing yeah that's insane yeah it didn't and it didn't land in the moment because no. she, she was like uh looking around like trying Clearly that was improvised. This must have been a fun trailer to edit compared to a fun movie to actually edit. Because the trailer, like, sure, you've got enough crazy moments that people are going to put in the movie and see in the trailer and be like, oh, sure, I'll go see that. Sure. And in the, in the actual edit of the movie, nothing makes sense. Nothing. In terms of the, the moments that are supposed to be like the big beefy moments mm -hmm. for all these characters, nothing really plays. Well, and back to your previous point about like, 
the, the amount of time that all of these characters were studying, and you specifically with Lady Gaga, I actually think it's worse. She should probably stop telling people she studied this character for mm -hmm. nine months because holy shit, yeah, that's a performance after nine months right. of studying. Like, ooh. I mean, there's a, an Italian dialect coach who came out very publicly after this and was like, this Lady Gaga's garbage. accent is bad. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> so, I'm not going to do an Italian accent to disservice that lady because I don't even want to do a fake Italian accent. <laughs> you mean a real Italian? A real accent? Italian accent. <laughs> yeah. For uh, yeah to drag the fake ones yeah. yeah but i mean come on like you want us to buy that you're speaking english to each other okay yeah sure definitely not your first language definitely not your home country but cool cool, cool. fine mm -hmm. we're, we're on that ride you better be so committed so hard to pristinely like i would i'd be at home using the same accent so that i never broke so that right. the movie could because you want me on this journey for almost three hours with you you better be so good in the accent land you that I don't, you gotta be so, so good, good. Uh, so, so fucking good, good uh. <laughs> that I'm like, that I'm on the ride with you. And that was the thing is like, I, I wanted to love this film mm -hmm. because I went in with very low expectations and I was like, oh, okay, well, nope, that, sh that I can't, can't do it except for Jared Leto who saved yes. the film. Mm -hmm. I also, I will say this, he doesn't get any credit in seemingly anything he ever does, which is a shame because I think he's a great actor is Jack Houston. Agreed. And I did like him a lot in this. And I think he also, as a character and an actor, brought the levity to the role that the whole rest of the movie kind of needed. I agree with that statement. But the downside is I would have just as loved, easily loved to see him being a crazy caricature like everybody else in this movie what? and talking about like showering his groin the way that Jared Leto does <laughs> at a public phone in an airport. I totally forgot about that. And then Al Pacino walks up on him and he's like trying to get him to stop tapping him so he can continue to talk about his junk. Yeah. I completely forgot about it's that. It's really rough down there. That's a line in a movie that's trying to get Oscar nominated. And it's not, it's honestly, that's probably Jared Leto's best scene in the whole movie oh is my, that scene okay. between him and Al Pacino. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I gotta go. But what I don't understand with Jack's character, though, is that he, like, there were so many opportunities for, like, because you can't all be big, right. as we've already established. Right, right, right. But there were opportunities to make choices that would have, I don't know what the word is, but would have maybe underpinned what every other actor was going for. And when you're not, like, I, I don't know where he was billed in, in, in the credits or whatever, but when you're not, He's, Al Pacino. Or he's not, not a name. He's not even close to the top yeah. five. So when you're not that, then your goal is service the scene and service the the top five there in the scene with you, even if it's only one of them. Like right. you are really playing second fiddle to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, but when a film doesn't know what it wants, maybe he felt like he was doing that. Maybe he did do that. But it just was so like it was so hard to buy into this world. Yeah. And that was like, yeah, that That's was such that was a what, shame. It is because this was such an opportunity. You, I mean, I, again, not to be ageist, but like, I mean, Ridley Scott. This, this may be who knows how many more films he's going to be able to direct. Al Pacino, who knows how many more he's going to want to do. Mm -hmm. Like you had Jeremy Irons. He's not sure. young either. You, these could be people's like signature exit performances. Is this how you, I mean, maybe they'll all stay alive just to be able to do another film so that this ain't it. But right. it, is this the film you're going out on? I know. Like, wha woof. <laughs> woof. Big woof. Yeah. Um, so obviously we don't like this movie. We hate this movie. <laughs> we think it is a steaming pile of garbage. But Kate, there's other better movies out there, especially yes. this year in this award season cycle. Yes. What do you think people should watch instead of? King Richard yeah, right, now, right now, right okay. now. If you want to see a, I don't know how people pronounce it. Is it biopic or biopic? However you want to say it. I, I say biopic, but I don't know. I say biopic because it's a biographical picture. Biographical picture. Yeah, yeah. One would think. Well, I King Richard was pristine top to bottom. I sobbed uh -huh. my way through that film uh -huh. and it, it, I thought I was like, I know the ending. I got this. I know what they're going to do. And the way that it ended was so honest and so relatable and not at all what I thought. And I thought, I'm sorry, Will Smith. He's another one. He's earned his stripes. I think he's a fucking prolific actor yeah. and he's so good in it. And the girls that play Venus and Serena are unbelievable in it too. And their range is so, so if you're looking for a film that's not about a fake fashion family or whatever the hell, if you actually want to see a movie about people who have impacted, like growing up and watching them uh -huh. and, that for sure. Have you seen it? No, I oh. missed it when it was on HBO Max. Uh, and I am so glad that it's 
you know, still in the awards conversation. I got to check it out. You have to. And I think this is, I mean, my guess is it's probably going to wind up being his Oscar movie and he'll finally get the I, Oscar for it. I would hope so, but who, I don't know exactly all of the people that he's going up against, but I, everything I have heard is that he doesn't feel like it is. I don't know if that's true or not, but his interesting, the way when you juxtapose like, uh, Richard Williams, I think that's, that has to be his name. Yeah. Richard Williams. Um, when you juxtapose him, his, even his just like stance and his mouth, like will does this thing where he like, I can't even replicate it, but he, changes his mouth somehow and like moves his shoulders forward and he never fucking loses that. Mm. Like he stays so hard in that I'm like, he should, he's got to get something for it. It's up for SAG Awards, obviously. That's right. How yeah. it's up. But um, I don't know who's in the pool with him for noms. I know for the Oscars, I mean, his toughest com competition is probably going to wind up being Andrew Garfield for Tick, Tick, Boom or Benedict Cumberbatch for Power of the Dog. I hated Power of the Dog. Haven't seen it. It's not. I I we, I did an episode on it. I don't think it's good. I don't. I don't know why it's getting a, a billion award nominations. Andrew Garfield, though, also has gotten as much positive press for his performance in Tick Tick Boom as Will Smith and Benedict Cumberbatch have for their roles. Oh wow! So those the, they all have a shot, as far as I'm concerned. I think the most likely Denzel Washington's nominated also in Javier Bardem, but I feel like it's probably a horse race between those three. Well, and it's tough. I, I would that sounds right to me. And it's tough because Andrew Garfield's the darling right now, and his press tour is mm -hmm. making him the darling. And all of the clips that we're seeing are making him the darling, which is usually like a tell right. for who's probably going to win because they're not going to vote for not the darling. Sure. Um, but I would be really sad if he doesn't. I mean, I I haven't seen Tick Tick Boom or Power of the Power of the Dog Power of Dog Power of the Dog the Dog. I haven't yeah. seen either. I'm supposed to. They're on my list. But I I just as soon like such a juxtaposition. I watched House of Gucci on a Tuesday and then that the day after is when I watched King Richard and I was like, mm -hmm. I was in from jump and I couldn't take my eyes away from the screen and I was crying within the first two minutes and I was just along for the ride. And I was like, the two of these movies next to each other, it's embarrassing. It made House of Gucci that much worse. I was like, <laughs> oh, two biopics in, in the same year and one of them crushed it. One of them was a video game. I, like... <laughs> I can't I can't be along for it. Well, I can't wait to see it. Um, and it's been so great to see you, Kate. You so too, thanks Jay. again for coming on and being a great guest. Thanks for having me. Where can the listeners find you find, and the podcast? Find me on everything at, at the Kate Gaffney, T H E K A T E J F F N E Y. And then the podcast is Service from Hell. We're on everything. It's about customer service stories. It's not just limited to funny comics like Jay. It's, you know, there's doctors and lawyers and all kinds, because I think all jobs are customer service. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're there. Find us on all the things. Sweet. Um, you can find me at Diet J on Twitter and Instagram, jlightcomedy.com for show dates. If you like the show, consider subscribing on Patreon. You get access to bonus episodes and uh, my full film library. If you subscribe at five dollars a month, it's not that much. Get on, get on JFlix. Oh, it's I easy. love it. Yeah. And as, I'm just gonna do a pitch because Jay doesn't know I'm doing this, but like as someone else who has a podcast, these are a ton of work and they cost money. And he has two interns who haven't eaten in several weeks. And <laughs> you just you need to join the Patreon because it's a labor of love. It's all for free, and we're just putting content out there. And Jay's lovely, and just it's it's five dollars. Like it's you you much. spent that this morning at Starbucks. Like you should for sure join it. Hey. You're the I best. You. Look you. at you pitching. Yeah, um, I'll take my $5 now. Please. There you Thank go. You. Thank, Thank, you. Also there Thank you so much. Um, thanks again. Thank you for having me. Of course. This has been Blockbusting. Go see something good for a change. Woohoo. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs>